This video is about two dimensional forces and we're going to start with an object being pulled by a rope at an angle and this object is going to have 10 kilograms and it's going to be pulled with 100 newtons. And I want to know is how does the object accelerate? So we know the object has weight down and then after that we have to split the angle of 100 newtons into separate components. So the weight down simply mass times gravity 10 times a gravitational pull of 10 meters per second squared but the force that's happening at an angle of 100 newtons is basically that angle is the sine of 30 degrees or is it the angle is 30 degrees and we have to take that angle and the hypotenuse of the triangle that we have drawn and find the horizontal component and the vertical component of this force. The vertical component will be 100, which is the hypotenuse of our triangle, times the sine of 30 degrees, and it comes out to 50 newtons. The horizontal component is 100 cosine of 30 degrees, and it comes out to 86.6 newtons. Now, this object is on the ground. And normally, when we have an object on the ground, the weight and the normal force are equal and opposite to each other. In this case, that is not entirely true. We don't know the normal force here. And the reason is, is because the object is being pulled up by 50 newtons. So we're going to redraw this diagram a little bit differently. And we're going to draw it where we know the horizontal component of the tension is 86.6 newtons. And we know the vertical component of the tension is 50 newtons. And then we know the weight down is 100 newtons, and then we don't know normal force. So when we draw it like this, we need to know that since this object is not getting pushed into the ground, and it's not getting lifted off the ground, and it's still 100% in contact with the surface it's sitting on, that the normal force and the force of tension up, which we have labeled as F sub Y right now, equals 50 newtons, are going to have to be equal and opposite to the object's weight. So we have Fn plus Fy is going to equal Fg, where Fg is 100 newtons, and Fn we don't know, and then Fy is 50. We can solve that equation to where Fn will equal 50 newtons. The important part to understand is that all three of these things have to cancel each other out because the net force in the vertical direction is zero. So now all we have to deal with is the net force in the x direction. So we have net force equals mass times acceleration and we have net force equals the force of tension in the x direction. We set those two problems equal to each other, substitute our variables in, and we get the acceleration of the object is 8.66 meters per second squared. Now the question is, is what if, the next question I want to ask is, what if the mu sub s or this coefficient of static friction is 0.5 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.25? So previously we had no friction. So now we're going to add friction in and see how that affects our object's motion. So we have our same object of 10 kilograms. It's going to have 100 newtons of weight down. It's going to have a force of tension in the y direction that is 50 newtons. It's going to have normal force up that we know is also 50 newtons. And then we're going to have a horizontal tension force, which is going to be 86.6 newtons. And we're going to have a frictional force that we don't know right now. So the first thing we've got to do is compare it to static friction. So we take 0.5 times the normal force. And this is, again, why we use normal force for friction, uh, because right now our surface isn't as pressed down as hard as if it was just sitting there without being pulled up. Since there's a tension pulling up on it, it has lightened the amount of force that the ground has to push back with. Um, so we have static friction equals 0.5 times 50. So we now have that the static friction is going to be 25 newtons. And then we can solve for the kinetic friction, where it's 0.25 times 50. And that is going to be 12.5 newtons. Knowing that our vertical components are equal and opposite, those all cancel out. And then the next question we have to ask ourselves is the net force in the x direction greater than or equal to the static friction? The answer is yes. 
So at that point, we ignore static friction and we move right on to kinetic friction. So 86.6 newtons is greater than 25 newtons. The object is in motion. If it's in motion, that's kinetic. Kinetic means motion. So our object has broken free and we are going to care, compare all of our net forces with kinetic friction now. So if the object is broken free, we use kinetic friction and we ignore static friction. So kinetic friction is 12.5 newtons. So our net force equals MA. And our net force equals 86.6 newtons minus 12.5 newtons. So MA is going to equal 86.6 minus 12.5. 86.6 minus 12.5 is 74.1 newtons, and our mass is 10. So when we divide by 10 to find the acceleration, we get the acceleration is 7.41 meters per second squared. So a big note here, a force at an angle is going to have a y component that changes the normal force. Okay, It's very important to understand that. If we push down on this object, it also changes our normal force. Our normal force would increase. If we pull up on the object, our normal force will decrease. So a big note is to understand that we have forces at an angle pulling like this. We have to separate it into components, and our y component changes our normal force. Uh, at that point, if it changes our normal force, it changes how a friction affects the object. So it's important to know what's going on, how this motion of this object changes by how the force is applied here. Okay, now we're going to move on to static problems. And static problems are very nice, but they're very, very math intensive. They're very nice in the sense that acceleration equals zero. And if acceleration equals zero, what happens is our net force is going to be zero, so that means that all of our forces are going to be equal and opposite to each other. So here we're going to have a sign, and this sign is going to be 10 kilograms. And there's going to have two strings holding the sign in its place. One of them is acting at a 30 degree angle, and the other is acting at a 60 degree angle. And we want to find the tension of each string. So we're going to redraw it. We're going to have weight acting down at 100 newtons. And we're going to have tension 1 and tension 2 acting at angles. An angle of 30 degrees and an angle of 60 degrees. At that point, we know since they're at angles, we're going to have to separate them into X and Y components to kind of make everything a little bit more simplistic. So using the adjacent side to the 60 degree angle, T1 is going to be cosine of 60 degrees, or that side is going to be T1 multiplied by the cosine of 60 degrees, and the vertical side of our tension will be T1 sine 60 degrees. Move over to our other tension, and the adjacent side is going to be T2 times the cosine of 30 degrees, and the vertical side is going to be T2 times the sine of 30 degrees. What we're doing there basically is using trig with a triangle, taking the hypotenuse and multiplying it by uh, the cosine of that angle or the sine of that angle uh, based on how we do our trig problems. And then if you need me to show that to you again, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, but we'll do that in class if you have come in with the right questions or uh, tutorials, not a problem. Um, but we're trying to go through it a little bit quicker here. So what we have now is the weight acting down. At 100 newtons, the force in the x direction to the right is T1 cosine of 60 degrees. A force vertically is going to be T1 sine 60 degrees. And then we're going to have another force vertically caused by the second tension. And that is going to be T2 sine 30 degrees. And then we'll have a second horizontal force acting to the left that is T2 sine of 30 degrees. Now, because acceleration is zero, vertical components of forces must be equal and opposite. So those 
the 100 newtons of weight is going to be equal to and in the opposite direction of our two vertical forces. So we're going to make that an equation. We're going to have 100 newtons equals T2 sine of 30 degrees plus T1 sine of 60 degrees. And the same thing applies for our horizontal forces. They must be equal and opposite. So we write that equation. We're going to have an X equation and a Y equation. Our X equation is T2 cosine of 30 degrees is going to equal T1 cosine of 60 degrees. Now this one's a lot quicker to solve. We can solve the X direction equation here just for one of the tensions. Because our goal is to find the tension in each string. So if we need to find what T2 is, what we could do is divide both sides by the cosine of 30 degrees. That cancels on the left side, so T2 is going to equal tension 1 multiplied by the cosine of 60 degrees and then divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. Now the great thing about this is now that we have a value for T2, we could plug that into our other equation. So we have a Y equation that has a T2 in it, and so we're going to go over here. We're going to have 100 newtons equals, and we're going to substitute what we found for T2 in the X direction in for T2 which is T1 cosine of 60 degrees divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. And then we keep writing our equation. We have sine of 30 degrees next to it, and we're going to add T1 sine of 60 degrees to it. We're going to simplify that a little bit more. How we do that is we want to get everything into numbers. That's, it's a lot easier to put them all into numbers. So here what we have is T1 times and 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 0.87. And where I get those is the cosine of 60 degrees is 0.5, the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5, and the cosine of 30 degrees is 0.87. And then I'm going to add all that to uh, T1 times the sine of 60 degrees, which happens, the sine of 60 degrees happens to be 0.87. So we rewrite our equation with all those numbers in it, and now we have T1 is going to equal, or 100 equals T1 times 0.29 plus T2. I'm all messed up. Let's try that again. 100 equals two, T1 times 0.29 plus T1 times 0.87. We can add those two variables together because they're like terms. So now we have 100 equals T1 times 1.16. And if we're solving for T1, we can divide by 1.16, and our tension 1, that whole tension of that rope is 86 point, or string, is 86.2 newtons. Makes it a little bit long and drawn out process, but we now have the number for tension 1. And we can use that number and plug it in to our equation for T2, where T2 equals 86.2 newton, newtons, multiplied by the cosine of 60 divided by the cosine of 30, put those into numbers, which we already know, and T2 now equals 49.7 newtons. This is one of those things that requires a lot of practice, and it's very labor-intensive with math and, and uh, trig, basically. It's important to understand that you can split these up into components. So uh, feel free to attack some practice problems in your book. We'll do some in class. Um, but it's, it's something that's going to take some time to work through.